Alrighty guys, we're back for some Kraken Aggro, and this is a Streets of New Capenna standard build. We're going to go over the deck, then hop right into some normal play mode. But first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well. So I hope that sounds fun to you guys. Also, we do got that relatively new Discord. If you want to join that up, there is a link in the description. So what do we got in the build here? Well, this is a deck based around Reservoir Kraken, and I really wanted to put an aggro deck together that has this Kraken as the top end of the curve. <laughs> and I really wanted to make sure I stuck to aggro and not tempo as well. That, that was something important for me. So yeah, let's go over the rest of the deck, then we'll go over Kraken here. We have four slip out the backs because protection for our creatures is very important. And that's the same reason we got a couple March of the Swirling Mists in here as well. Although you can totally target your opponent's creatures with both of these too if you need to slow them down. Um, we have four Commando Faces Kakazan because it's a super aggressive card. And we have some pretty good two drops to lead this into. We have four Play With Fires because pinging the opponent's face is going to be pretty important but also some early removal is important as well. We have four Ledger Shredders. This card can get big very fast, especially when the opponents often cast their second spell each turn, so you can uh, filter through your deck quite nicely while getting a nice chunky flyer on the board too. We have four Bloodthirsty Adversary, just an amazing two drop. The Haste 2-2 two -two alone is amazing. Go turn one Kamano, Turn two, have a 3-3 haste swinging on in already, but hey, if you're not casting it out on your turn two, maybe you're waiting to cast it out when you got the five mana to go ahead and recast like a play with fire or a royal eruption from the grave. We got four of these as well. More removal, just again, it's going to be important, but then this can also hit the opponent's face as well. So yeah, it, it's no wonder we have the play with fires and the royal eruptions in here, kind of taking a lesson from the uh, popular Boros aggro, right? In our three drop spots, we have an Arnie Broken Brow. Now, this is a card I don't get to play with often. It's a three drop, three, three with haste and boast for one. You may change Arnie Broken Brow's base power to one plus the greatest power among other creatures you control until end of turn. This could get pretty darn big if you have the Kraken on the board already, so that's kind of why Arnie is making an appearance here. We have four Reckless Storm Seekers because haste is super important, but then also <laughs> giving Kraken haste is even way more like that is so cool guys could you imagine turn three reckless storm seeker into a turn four <laughs> reservoir kraken yeah i guess the opponent could tap it down but you know we can dream we can hope either way reckless storm seeker is just really good regardless we have two prismari commands and if you really want you could rock fable of the mirror breaker here but i'm opting for the prismari command because um, of the Bloodthirsty Adversary too, being able to recast this from the grave is going to be pretty darn good. Not only can this ping any target for 2 damage, but it helps you filter through your hand if you need to. I'm sure Ledger Shredder's already doing that for you anyways. Um, but maybe Ledger Shredder ends up, you know, you might end up having a lot of extra land in your hand, and so you can discard those to the uh, Prismari Command's ability as well. But you can also ramp off of it, getting that treasure. And kind of the most important thing, I would say, is destroy target artifact. There are a ton of artifacts still floating about that are very important to remove, <laughs> like immediately, like um, Asika's Chariot, for example. So yeah, I think Prismari Command's going to be pretty good here. And of course, the top end of the build, Reservoir Kraken, a 4-drop 6-6, six, six, Trample with Ward 2. Woo, buddy, this card is stacked. However, at the beginning of each combat, if Reservoir Kraken is untapped, any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. If they do, tap Reservoir Kraken and create a 1-1 blue fish creature token with this creature can't be blocked. Even with the downside, I think this is still pretty darn good. The opponent has to tap down a creature, so now maybe you're getting in with your other creatures anyways, and then next turn you have a fishy that can't be blocked and then they might have to tap down Kraken again because they might be getting too low on life. And now you're just getting more fishies to swarm in every single turn. 
I don't know, man. I think this card is freaking sweet, and I'm surprised that I rarely see it. Like, we see it every now and then, and we're like, oh, that's cool. They're playing Reservoir Kraken. But other than that, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see, right? So, in the mana base, we do have a Soaring City, two Den of the Bugbears, a Crucible, if I can find it, Crucible of Defiance. No snarls this time around, but we are rocking a Hall of the Oracles, or Hall of Oracles. This is kind of an underplayed land, isn't it? So you can tap for a color this. You can pay you can pay a mana, tap it to add one mana of any color. So that's all fine and dandy, I suppose. But the main reason it's in here is you can tap it down, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, activate only as a sorcery, and only if you cast an instant or sorcery this turn. So, essentially, you know, we have a ton of instant and sorcery cards to play, but let's say on turn three, you have three mana out there, and you want to Royal Eruption an opponent's creature and swing on in with, like, um, your adversary that you played on turn two, okay? So you do that, and now you have this open mana, and if it's Hall of Oracles, you can actually just tap that down, put a counter on the adversary before swinging on in, so that's pretty cool. There is one downside to this is if you only have one creature and the instant or sorcery you end up playing is a slip out the back, <laughs> then obviously you have no creature to put a plus one plus one counter on at that point. But uh, since it can only activate as a sorcery anyways and slip out the back is probably going to be kept open at instant speed for the opponent's turn, hopefully that doesn't come into play too often. You have a couple honorable mentions over here. A Fading Hope because removal is going to be a little bit important this also could help you protect your own creatures by bouncing them back to your hand and there's a cool thing where you can bounce an early played uh, bloodthirsty adversary back to your hand and then recast it for more mana and maybe like recast a prismaric command back from the grave off of that it's just an honorable mention though i couldn't find room for it also you'll notice that i'm not playing a hall of the storm giants in here i don't think we're ever going to have enough mana to actually power this up but maybe we would and <laughs> maybe you want to drop an island and go up a hall so it's, it's something to consider i suppose okay guys let's go ahead and hop into some normal play mode and see how it goes There we go, right into the first match. Hopefully I went over the deck well enough there, guys. Some some days I'm like, oh yeah, I think I went over that pretty well. And other days I'm like, ah, did I? Either way, playing the matches usually helps me go over it a lot better. So it's not a bad hand. I would love a Kumano off the top. We don't see it that time, and that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna play Pathway on blue, most likely. Royal Eruption. Well, there's no way. I mean, we have two Bloodthirsty Adversaries. I'm going to try it, but, like, there's... Okay, it hits. It hits. Oh, play with fire. Yep, okay. <laughs> I was, like, too open. Like, there's no way that this just happens, right? But I think it was worth slamming out there anyways. Another Reservoir Kraken. Uh-oh, I'm getting a little nervous. We might not see a second blue source here. All right, I'm going to try Arnie. Here's why. If it's a... Okay, it's not a Juari. If it's another play with fire, uh, Arnie gets over it. And yeah, nice. We actually got it down. That's sweet. Hold up. Did they miss a land drop? Whoa. Whoa! I I don't see some of these cards. Oh my goodness! Another reservoir kraken. <laughs> oh no, guys! Oh no, we're drawing so poorly the first game. Oh no! At least we have March of the Swirling Mist open. I guess we could just easily get rid of a reservoir kraken. <laughs> Come on! I really want to play this kraken. We could get there, guys. We could get there. Okay, okay, this can generate a treasure for us and we can actually play it on our turn if we want to make sure that it, it lands. I, 
think I'm going to, guys. And honestly, draw two treasure. I, I would ping them for two, but like we need to, we need to see something here, you know? Okay, we got a land, that's good. And discard a single Kraken and the mountain. I want to keep two of the Krakens because, and I want to keep everything else here too. I'm tempted to just Royal Eruption while we can too, but let's keep March open this time around. Well, protecting the Reservoir Kraken could be better. The one there. Okay, I'm gonna end, and here's why. We, you know, we weren't playing around a Juari earlier. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, they have two treasure open now. But we're going to play around a Juari now. Okay, Reservoir Kra Kraken can come on the board, and we have a slip out the back now, too. That's sweet. Let's see if this hits. It sure does hit. All right. The Kraken is finally on the board. I say finally because I, I, I've I played... Wait, have I played with Reservoir Kraken in the past on some videos? I've definitely played with it off video, and every time I've tried, I, I never get to see the Kraken. Either way, Slip Out the Back is going to be huge here. Like, this has Ward too as well. So, like... It's hard to get rid of. <gasps> Bro, relax. Oh my goodness. Now the slip at the back actually has to hit here. We don't we don't do the march because we don't care too much about the bloodthirsty adversary. So this could be an easy <laughs> negate. <laughs> my Kraken. <laughs> no! Okay, I can play another one. It's okay. Everything's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Alright, let's see if the opponent can keep up the removal game here. Oh no! <laughs> My poor Krakens! Ward 2 at least, but yeah, it doesn't matter. They have tons of mana open here. Oh, well, we tried. We tried. Okay, how do we get around this, guys? How are we supposed to do this now? Target player draws to you. Let's do... Alright, let's 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 start with Ledger Shredder. Because, like, we could get a treasure off the command. We keep the march open because, like, they have tons of removal that we already went through but okay I'm not gonna keep the march open I'm not gonna keep the march open at some point the opponent has to run out that's that's my theory all right so this time round, I'm actually going to get the counter on the Shredder. And we're going to keep the Mountain in hand as a discard if we have to connive on the opponent's turn. And like if we like whatever we see off the top here. You monster! <laughs> oh no, guys. Alright, alright, alright. We could have kept the March open, to be fair. We could... Play. Let's start with the play with fire to the opponent's face. Royal eruption. Opponent's at eight. We really need to reestablish a board state at some point. I'm gonna send it. It's it's not terrible when the opponent is getting that low. And we play the mountain this time because we might see something off the top. We have March if we want to uh, get rid of a couple of their creatures, too. Oh, that has Ward. Ward 2. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. Okay. 
Den of the Bugbear is actually not half bad here. So, um, X is two, and then we still have the ward for two. I'm gonna pass, though, because they might drop a Goldspan Dragon. Like, we know Goldspan has to be in this deck, right? And this could be another, like, this could be a test of talents or something. Yes, I'm sure. Auto pay, pay the ward too. We're barely holding on for dear life, guys. Barely holding on. Desert Doom, oh buddy. Now that's an is it, uh, that, yeah, that's an is it build if I've ever seen one. We can't even power up Den because we're swinging into that. Yeah, good game opponent. We have been controlled, very good game. That's rough, man. A lot of great is it uh, cards over there that we don't get to see too often. That was cool, though. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, guys, I saw that this displays an MMR now, too. You guys will have to let me know. What's a good MMR? I, I, I don't know if this one's mine or if this one's mine. No, that's the opponent's MMR, probably. So this one's probably mine up here. So 4,782. Is that good or bad? I have no idea. And I don't know which one I'd rather prefer, honestly. <laughs> I would. I guess I would technically want to go up against uh, easier opponents. <laughs> Ones that don't completely obliterate me. But at the same time, I obviously want it to be uh, good, too. <laughs> uh, there's got to be a good middle ground. Maybe that's where I am. Maybe I'm in the middle ground. Oh my, these hands have been really bad. Well, the, the last hand wasn't bad. We just drew really bad. Okay, that's better. All right, I'm gonna ditch the march. I That might be a terrible decision, uh, especially with like how much we've been getting uh, controlled recently, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, won't we? This is a fun deck so far though, guys. Like it's, it's been, it's been interesting. I'm gonna keep that. The last match, like, we didn't get to, we didn't get to, like, play it all out like we'd want, but, like, I see it, if that makes sense. I, I see what the deck is trying to do. We'll keep that on top, too. Especially since they foretold here, we could just ramp, but I'm gonna prepare with the Storm Seeker. Could ramp, get a treasure and whatnot, but um, if we top deck a untapped land, then Kraken can hit the board really strong here. And we can give it haste, potentially. Woo! I hope we draw land. Because they only have an open... Well, 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 hold up. They're... Well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. No, oh, okay, that's okay, actually. We just don't want to get eaten by a board wipe, so we might just want to keep Prismari Command open to make sure the Kraken can hit next turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep... Prismari Command open here. This could still be a Fading Hope. It sure is a Fading Hope. Okay. Um. Now the question is, is it still Prismari Command? We can actually draw instead of... Uh, could actually draw and look for that land on our own and then we'll have the extra treasure if we end up seeing yeah i think that's pretty good okay discard two royal eruption is actually pretty great to uh to keep but we're gonna send it hopefully it's worth keeping this pathway because like that's a Maybe we actually send the land there instead since we have the treasure. My thought process is if we see a... Okay, they pass it to nighttime. Oh my. Arnie's pretty cool. We're actually just going to attempt the Reckless Storm Seeker this turn. I feel like it's not going to survive though. Simple Infernal Grasp could take it out. And it is a Ray of Enfeeblement. Whoa. 
I mean, it slows us down a little bit, but I'm glad we got to keep it. I'm glad we got to keep it. That's good. Got some uh, Demir control over there. Behold the multiverse might be the death of them, guys. <laughs> that might just be the death of them. Uh, we have a den. So... Too bad we can't get Arnie down on the same turn. I'm going to play the mountain. The deck requires a lot of land so far. They have no creature to tap this down. Give that haste. Down to one. We have an Arnie for next turn. Ha <laughs> ha GG. Opponent GG. Oh man. That's what the deck was supposed to do, but the opponent looked like they had a pretty slow start over there, so take that one with a grain of salt too. I think Prismari commands, like, the, the draw two and discard, I... I feel like it's somehow just a lot more risky than the Fable of the Mirror Breaker's second ability. <laughs> but Fable's also giving you some goblins too, so that's probably why. And so even though we can potentially recast the Prismari Command, I think Fable of the Mirror Breaker might just be better here anyways. That's something we'll talk about in the final thoughts. Oh, we got some uh, potential discard from the opponent here. Honestly, these discard builds are pretty scary sometimes. They can slow you down. They can slow you down early on, and then by their turn three, especially when they go first, they can have you discarding a couple cards from your hand, and it just, they can really mess you up. You gotta be cautious. It does not look like it's going to be discard. Got some more Demir, potentially. Let's pin face and see what we got here. Yep, I better keep the land. <laughs> better keep the land at this point. Seeing how much land we actually need. The Ledger Shredder getting discarded. I like this. I, li I like that card. That's a good addition, opponent. That was a really good addition, actually. So now it's probably just some control. O uh, um, yeah, some... Some counter spell open, right? I'm I'm not playing around it. I'm going right in. Jwari disruption. Aw oh, man. Okay, that might have been a card to play around. <laughs> if it was a simple Jwari, I suppose we probably wanted to play around that. But yeah, then it would just have been a play with fire turn. Actually, that would have been pretty good. Okay, okay, I got too greedy. Okay, bloodthirsty adversary. All right, let's try the adversary. It lands, and we have play with fire open for their turn. So yeah, la last turn we probably should have played it safe. We would have still had a reckless storm seeker in hand. Siphon insight, nice. Okay, let's hope they don't hit. We don't want to do play with fire now because we want the scry ability here, and they look at the top two and take one, which. It could end up being some removal. It could be a play with fire in and of itself. Um, we're going to go ahead and pass and save this open for their turn. But we also have March to protect the adversary if we really, really want to. Which I don't think we're going to. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay, they got a bloodthirsty adversary of their own. That's... Sweet, actually. Can, do they have to pay the red? I think they have to pay the red on that, so they can't actually get that. Okay, good. I'll let them attack. I'm pinging their face, though. They're going to save it as a blocker. That makes sense. They can use it to tap down the Kraken, too, which I think is fine. Okay, Kumano. Yeah, we, we keep that. We keep that, because I'm not running into another Juari. And playing Kraken next turn with the extra counter seems pretty good. Seems pretty good, honestly. And the opponent's decks have been very scary today. Easy 
easy block for the opponent. So they're going to go for the Siphon Insight again. That's pretty scary, man. Yeah, I'm surprised we don't see this more often. Non-land card with mana value 2 or less. Like, think about how much that actually hits. Oh, Invoke Despair. Oh, crap. All right, we better phase this. We better... No, submit zero. Wait, 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 wait. X is two. Submit zero. Phase out their creature, too. That way we can actually swing in next turn. Uh, losing Kamano really sucks, but at least we don't lose the Bloodthirsty Adversary, too. Um... Okay, let's get the Kraken down, guys. Arnie's a pretty good draw there. There it is, okay. Kraken has Ward too, so like they have to spend a ton of mana to take it out. Four mana for an Infernal Grasp to hit a Kraken, I mean. <laughs> you know? No, don't, don't look at the Kraken. It's not hurting you. No! Infernal Grasp! Why? <laughs> My poor Krakens. <laughs> They're trying. They're trying so hard. <laughs> okay. Well. We are getting, uh... Slowly... We're slowly running out of everything here. I'm gonna play this out on blue. And we are going to get Arnie down and hope that a swing happens here. But it might just be a fading hope. They have so many cards in hand somehow, guys. Like I don't I don't even understand that. Okay, they chump block. That's good. A chump block's good for us because Man, a den of the bugbear would be really good. Not off the top, but like if we had one out there. Like creature lands have been so important recently. Like just in general, creature lands are really important. Yeah, me hook for three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're top decking and hoping. Another Kraken would be good. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, guys. That is excellent. All we really, we just don't want to see land, really. We just want to keep smacking creatures on the board. Yeah, and broke despair. <laughs> That's rough, man. That's rough. Well, uh, Crucible, sure. Yeah. It has haste. We, we're we going to do it now. Like, we're trying to keep up, but it's not... It's not working. <laughs> um, Back to nighttime. So, Arnie would be great off the top. Um, Reckless Stormseeker again. Celestis, maybe they're finally out of removal. I don't think so, though. They can't power up Hall. They need six mana to power up the Hall. Play with Fire, that's not bad. Not too shabby. We'll save it open for their turn, though. They're gonna switch it to daytime off the Celestis? March. March for five. Oh, no, guys. Oh, no. They're back up to 14. They're tapped out. Let's do this now. See what's on top. And, uh, yeah, send the land to the bottom. <laughs> I, think, I think the opponent got us, guys. They definitely gained enough life here to, uh, to withstand for a while. Five life off the march is brutal. Hey, Den. That's really good, actually. I mean, it's not great to top deck, but like now that it's on the board, at least it's there. Oh, they can power up Hall. Crap, that's right. Crap. Now we're just running face first into things. <laughs> I think we might want to give this one to the opponent, so that way we can see um, more matches, guys, honestly. Because what's holding back a 1-1 against a deck like this going to do anyways? Like, yeah. They, they gain one. They can keep Hall open every turn. So even uh, if our den 
survives, like, even if it survives, like, an instant, like, March or Infernal Grasp or something. Woo, very brutal. Very, very tough. Hey, they got a Reckless Stormseeker from us. I wonder if they'll start swinging in here. Because I think they should. We can actually let them play it out if they start swinging. Yeah, nice. Okay, we'll let them play this out. Maybe we'll draw something good, too. Yeah, losing the Kraken early on was definitely... They can't power up Hall this turn. They only have five open. So it, this might actually get through. It does not. It is an Infernal Grasp. And March does not protect it because we can only do X is zero. All right. So we'll let them play it out. Power up Hall and swing on in. They don't know what's in our hand, though, so maybe they're going to be... They, they might be cautious about it because it could be like a fading hope or something but like I hope not they're gonna be cautious about it crap <laughs> I was gonna let you play it out opponent now I gotta wait an extra turn <laughs> yeah but I mean they have it they have it like they had a hive here and a hall of the storm giants too uh, they might still have it, actually. They might have something fancy in hand. Uh, they got two different cards from us. There it is. Okay, good game. I forget if I already dropped him a good game or not, but... Yeah, wow. So far, not too good. I feel like we run out of cards very fast, and so some more draw power would be necessary. But, man, I love the concept of this deck. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments. What could we do to make Kraken just really aggressive? I like I said, I think I think Reservoir Kraken's <laughs> a great top end creature for aggro. I think a big problem is that because it is blue, like generally speaking, you're gonna lean it more into a tempo style build. Now here's a hand, guys. Now here's a hand. It I like like, yeah, this is a great draw. Okay. Um, play this down in blue. Swing on in for three. Like, we, we go first here, too? Like, this is... This is stacked in our favor, guys. I hope the opponent has a lot of control. <laughs> oh, no! It's angels, guys. Oh, crap. All right, well, first of all... Uh, a Giada has to go. That's the first step here. And then we're probably going to keep March open. Royal Eruption doesn't hit a lot of angels. I'm going to start with a swing because if they trade with that, yeah. Okay. Hold up. If we ping everything to face and then march their angels next turn, we could just end up winning. I know it's my go. I'm sorry, opponent. All right, check it out. Everything to face. It's crazy. It's a it's a crazy play. But if we like, they play their three drop angel. Okay. And then we march both of their angels. We have five here on the board. Okay, we didn't get to see. We didn't get to see anything that could finish this. Another land. Yeah, that's not great. We can do five, but they're going to gain a ton here. So we actually have to just pass. And we wait. We pass and we wait. Just just another turn, though. Angel of Destiny. Oh, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Do we just want them to gain six and then phase out all three of these? Oh, guys. <laughs> oh, guys, they gain eight anyways, so. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, X is three. So what we should have done was take out uh, Giada right away. 
but like yeah we're not gonna come back from the life game guys unfortunately this has double strike <laughs> Oh man, hey, how come we don't see this in angels more often? How come we just don't see that, you know? That's weird. That's very weird. Yeah, we knew the Righteous Valkyrie was gonna uh, slam onto the board. Uh, good game, opponent. Good game. Oh, we're not dead. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that's right, that's right. The uh, at the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total, each player, Angel of Destiny, attack this turn, loses the game. Oh my goodness. All right, all right, everything's fine. Everything's fine, guys. No one panic. <laughs> we had a great, we had a great hand, but uh, Angels, man. And if we took out Giada, then the Righteous Valkyrie still would have been a 2-4, and that's actually quite hard to hit. And so we knew next, the, the turns following the Righteous Valkyrie, that angels were going to hit the board and they were going to gain life anyways. And so risking it that turn, we had five on the board and they were down to seven. Risking it that turn actually was probably the best bet to win. What do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? Uh-oh. All of oracles might slow us down big time here. I'm gonna ditch the Prismari command. We might be able to recast it from the uh, Bloodthirsty Adversary. And we're actually going to go Ledger Shredder because we need to start conniving some of this away to look for more land. Which is pretty funny, actually. Got some mono black over there. Man, normal play mode's been rough lately. Oh no, my Ledger Shredder! Oh crap! We might just want to scry over the Kamano. Oh crap, guys. Oh crap. Hall, Hall of Oracles holding us up. Oh no, come on. Uh, Trespasser's awful for us. That's an awful card to go up against for this deck. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, we, we got land. Um... We got to take out the Trespasser, right? What do we discard? It's an awful card to attempt to uh, to get rid of, isn't it? How do I even do this? I guess we do this. We're 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 kind of uh, we're kind of stuck because of the the red source, but if we can top deck, discards two cards, <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no guys, oh no. <laughs> All right, everything's fine. We are currently in a state of getting obliterated and it happens, it happens. Okay, there it is, we gotta land, let's go. The Kraken hits the board. <laughs> okay. Woo. So we're at nine, so the opponent's thinking, oh, if I tap this down and give him a fishy, uh, am I gonna be able to swing in? And they, they will be able to swing in with like the trespasser and everything. Okay, we get to block with the fishy too, though. Unless, yeah, so the ward two on the Kraken protects it for now. And we definitely chump block here. Like, we could take out Shamble Buddy, but we, we chump that Trespasser. We are way too low. Luckily, the decayed zombie's about to die. And another land off the top would be sweet. Also, they need another creature here if they want to tap down the Kraken. You monster! <laughs> oh no, guys! Oh, that's so bad! 
Come on. Aw, I was going to say, if we could get that up to a 2-4, then we'll be able to successfully block the Trespasser every turn. So we play everything because we're just way too low. Guys, why does a discard deck feel more aggressive than this build? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do wrong? I'm scared. I can't tell if we're getting unlucky or if it's just the build. We get to block that, luckily. But any kind of removal could have saved them there. So, like, an Infernal Grasp. But there's no way we don't risk that. There's absolutely no way we don't... Uh, okay, nice. Not bad. We have to save everything back as a blocker. Because at any time they can remove something and play like... Or, like, get a fifth mana and go invoke... <gasps> oh no, we're already so low. Oh crap, we, we should have, uh, we should have returned this beforehand. Ah, eh, whatever, we'll take the three. We're, we're dead, guys, like, we're, <laughs> we're super dead. Like, there's, there's no great way to come back from this. Because they could just... So we have to keep a card to discard. They can play it again next turn and do the same thing. Um, Actually, it would be better to play Crucible. Get a couple 1-1s one out there. And then uh, sacrifice one of them. That way we actually have a couple turns of protection from the Lantern. Hey, at least we're drawing stuff. Like, that's good. That's good news. But like I said, any, like, invoke despair, like, we're super dead. I don't have a lot of hope here. The lantern can gobble us up every single turn. Oh, oh, I'm surprised they didn't play that first, but I mean, I guess it didn't matter too much. Keep that to discard. Oh, this says menace. Oh, yeah. All they have to do is full swing. They activate Lantern first, though. That would be the best thing to do. Make sure... Make sure we don't have anything. They get an island. Good game. It was... It was a good game, opponent, indeed. So, full swing, we're forced to double block the God of Fright, and then two damage gets in. Regardless. So, the first Lantern, if we would have bounced it back sooner... If we had the option to bounce it back sooner... I'm not sure. We would have been in that game for like an extra turn, but it wasn't ours, guys. That was not our game to win, unfortunately. <laughs> Tough day. We're going to go one more. Even though we're 40 minutes in, the matches have been fast, and that's good. You know, five matches. This is the sixth one. I think we can end on a high note here because I don't think the deck is necessarily bad, <laughs> but we are uh, we're getting steamrolled right now. We'll see, we'll see. Had a, had a rough time with the Boros Control deck yesterday, too. It, it, we might just be on one of those streaks. It, like, it happens. You guys will have to let me know in the comments for sure, though. This isn't the best card to hit, but getting it off the board early and making him recast it is also not too shabby. I like the island here over the hall in case we get more islands and some krakens off the top. Some Selesnia, um, so some Selesnia enchantments is pretty bad because, okay, Royal Eruption still hits that, but then they get the Kami of Transients back to their hand. It doesn't matter, we, we definitely Royal Eruption here. Get rid of that Naturalist. And keep the player with fire open to take out the Kami of Transients that they end up playing here. And we try to take it out before they buff it. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be a Tamiyo safekeeping, but... Kami of Transients. 
So if we top deck an island here, okay, Reservoir Kraken, the Hall of Oracles holding us back again. Actually, if that feels pretty bad. That definitely feels pretty bad. Death Touch creature. Give Kami of Transients back. Yeah, we're not swinging. No attacks. So any land off the top, any land. No, no, if it's a tapped land, it won't work. So if it's like a Den of the Bugbear, we still can't play Reservoir Kraken. <laughs> oh no, guys, crap. I wasn't expecting Hall of uh, Oracles to hold us back at all. Feel of Ruin. <gasps> Bro, they're helping us. They're helping us, guys. Let's go. They have no idea that they're helping us, but... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They have no idea that they just helped us, but they have tons of stuff, like removal on the Stormseeker could happen. If they swing in, then it's looking great for us. Okay, yeah, save it back as a blocker. As a matter of fact, they might even tap it down. I don't think they do, because they can trade into the Kraken. They don't know we have another Kraken in hand. Um, but, so, okay. So we, we swing here. They take an extra five from the Kraken, and we get rid of their Death Touch creature, and then we have another Kraken in hand, and the Stormseeker can uh, do a thing. Even if the Kami of Transients comes down and they buff it pretty far, the Kraken is a big threat. Still have four mana open, though. That's pretty scary. Yeah, Rune of Might. Back up to a 4-4. Four, four. If they give it lifelink, Spirited Companion, draw 5-5. Five, five. Okay, Reservoir Kraken. Doesn't get over the two blockers there. They're going to tap down Spirited Companion, then. This could go either way, because they really, really need lifelink. And if they got it, they got it. You know what I mean? Like, if, if they got the lifelink, then this is an over game, probably. Because Kraken won't be able to keep up as long as they have the Spirited Companion to just keep on. Touch of the Spirit Realm! Pay the extra two, get that Kraken out of here! Oh no, guys. They still have two mana open. It could still be lifelink, which would be devastating. Okay, that's pretty bad too. That's a lot of damage. Whoa, they put it onto their spirited companion. Keep the Kami of Transients. Let's take the five. I thought they were gonna full swing there, but that would have been pretty dangerous, huh? Too bad this doesn't hit uh, enchantments, too. I'm tempted to, to... I'm tempted to look around here. See what we draw. Two damage. Draw two. So let's go ahead... Ping their face and see what we draw. Because, okay, because another Kraken could be huge for us. However, Slip Out the Back could be really good too. But I think we saved the Kraken for next turn. How do you guys feel about this? Because we're, we're banking on them not having, like, yeah. <laughs> tough decisions. Very tough, because we have to survive too. And at any moment, if they drop lifelink... Circle of Confinement. Oh no, that hits my token. Oh no. Oh, slip out the back would have been so good too. Oh crap. They might swing though. They might get greedy. They don't get greedy. They're smart about it. We're taking the five. <laughs> we could get there, guys. We got three creatures still. Any draw would be great. Woo! Bloodthirsty Adversary. Depending on what's in their hand, that, that just wins us the game. 
Come on, guys. Let's get there. Let's get there. Boil Eruption. The opponent's face. Maximize that damage to their face. There it is! We finally got one! <laughs> oh, man. Okay, guys. 50 minutes in. Let me know in the comments if I just made a, a really, really janky build or if we got super unlucky or maybe the opponents got really unlucky. I'm not 100% certain, honestly. <laughs> I'm looking at the build like, man, this should work. Like, there's a lot of sweet things going on here, but it doesn't work that great. First thing I wanna mention is get this Hall of Oracles out of there. I cannot believe it held us up two different games. I'm actually shocked by that. Um, I like honestly, I thought it wasn't gonna hold us up at all. It's only one of them, you know? But we have so many one drops uh, the greed off of the two, the, or the double blue on the Kraken is just way too important to keep like a Hall of the Oracles, which actually didn't do anything throughout this entire video. So, um, Play With Fire, Royal Eruption, Kumano, Bloodthirsty Adversary. This is just a solid, like, a solid lineup in general right here. And then, of course, if you're taking everything else out, like this, these are just amazing red cards packed into a deck with a top end of the Kraken with some protection thrown in there. A solid way to filter through your cards and get damage through in the air. An extra way to get haste off the top, a way to filter through and also just a bunch of utility. I don't know, I'm looking at it like it should work, but I, I just, I have no idea. <laughs> Either way, we are almost 52 minutes into the video. That is a, that is a chunky video right there. So if you made it this far in, you guys are champions and I super duper appreciate you. Yeah, get, get this haul out of here. That's the only change I would make. And then I would look into maybe, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't look into this deck at all. I think Reservoir Kraken probably belongs in a different style of build. But if you guys have great suggestions, let me know. And I'll, of course, you know, I I do like to respond to the uh, the comments when it comes time. I'm still looking at it like, man, this should, this should have had a better win rate. But I don't know. <laughs> Either way, guys, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.